Hey there. Well, as you probably guessed, I'm out with my dog, Cedar. And I wanted to talk to you today about the content conundrum that you are likely to experience at some point. So, as you might know, we are creating more and more content and publishing it online all the time. So, for example, um, a couple of years ago, WordPress websites were posting about 900 blog posts every minute. Today, that number uh, has increased to over 1,400 blog posts per minute. And that's over 2 million blog posts a day, and that's just from WordPress sites. So there's a lot of content that's out there. Um, why is that a conundrum? Well, because that means that your competition is publishing more posts, which means they're going to be found on Google more easily than you are if you're not increasing your blog posts. The other conundrum is that even if we could produce an infinite number of blog posts every day, um, your readers have a finite amount of capacity to read blog posts. So at some point we'll hit what Mark Schiffer calls content shock. And that's uh, basically the point at which you get diminishing returns on, on your blog posting because people are overwhelmed and they just can't drink from that fire hose. And there are studies that show content shock has already begun to arrive and companies are, are starting to experience this problem. Well, what can you do about it? A few things. Number one, you can start, uh, you could double down on your content and start producing uh, at a higher rate. Many companies have done this and have had success with it, but at some point you're going to uh, come up against diminishing returns. So you need to monitor uh, where your sweet spot is. Um, Many companies are, uh, well, st statistics are showing that companies that produce 16 or more blog posts per month get a lot more ROI from, than companies that are producing only a few blog posts a month. So try that out. That's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is simply to write better content. Uh, high quality content gets noticed by people. It gets shared. Uh, Google loves high quality content. Um, so that's another thing you can do. A third thing you can do is get really niche. And I've, I've um, talked about this in other videos. The more niche you get, the less competition you will have. Now you might attract fewer visitors to your site, but you're gonna get more high quality visitors and they're gonna love you more because you're catering to a very specific audience. And that makes you more valuable. So think about going more niche. Then the fourth thing you can do is to diversify your content. Um, produce more types of content, not just blogs. Uh, so for example, video is very popular these days and that's an expanding content type. Um, try that out. You want to be careful though. Don't simply jump on the next bandwagon simply because it's, it's another available content um, channel. If your customers aren't on, uh, say, Instagram, don't go on Instagram. It's a waste of time. But think about where your customers are likely to be and what opportunities you might be missing. Maybe you want to produce some slide shares. Maybe uh, spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, I mentioned videos. There, there could be other formats of content that, that could serve you well that maybe you haven't explored yet. So those are some opportunities to um, counteract the coming content shock. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Try some things out. Uh, add comments in the section below if you're on YouTube. I'd love to hear what's worked for you. So good luck and go out and do great things.